Good morning everyone, this is Brewster and today I'm coming to you with another puzzle by the wonderful setting duo Full Deck and Missing a Few Cards. Um, they have done some great puzzles that I've solved in the past. I think this is only the second of theirs that I've done on the channel but um, I've enjoyed the puzzles of theirs that I have done, even ones I haven't covered here. Um, so, um, yeah, what's going on on the channel? So the first thing is the Skilling Sudoku Puzzle Pack, which is the first of three packs in a series. Um, and the Skilling Sudoku Pack is the, pardon me, Pure Killer Pack. Um, and the Pure Killer Pack is designed... 30 um, puzzles um, of varying difficulties, including uh, quite a few that are designed to introduce um, solvers to some killer tricks. And um, I was initially quite worried that experienced solvers would find those easier puzzles a lot less fun because they're designed to sort of be very good for people who aren't familiar with those killer tricks. But the feedback I've gotten from experienced solvers is that they've really enjoyed those easier puzzles as well. So that's been really cool. Um, the second pack will be KG Constraints. Uh, sorry, caging constraints which will um, include a, a killer with other variants um, and then um, the third pack will be a mystery which will probably come out in October um, the second one will come out in September we're working hard on that now we've locked in most of the puzzles I think um, so the other things going on, there's the um, Race to 37 playlist, which you can find in my playlist section. There's the Bremsters Unpublished Puzzle Videos. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, where you will see if I release any um, videos that aren't being released to the main channel, I will announce them on Twitter, um, and also any other puzzle news. So if people tell me about packs that are going on or anything like that, I will announce those to uh, my Twitter account, so you can use that to get some Sudoku news as well. Um, what else? Um, I think that's about it. Let's have a look at the puzzle. Tea with the Queen by Full Deck and Missing a Few Cards. Um, actually, before I go into the puzzle, I do want to talk about something quickly, which is the reason that I've made these cells. These are fortress cells, and I've changed the way they look. And the reason I've done that is, um, oh, very, very quickly, is um, when they normally come in, um, and with this puzzle as well, often they'll just come in looking like a grey square. And that's fine, except for often when people want to highlight things, and this is a sandwich puzzle, um, when you highlight over, all it does is it gives the cell a bit of a tint and it changes your highlight colouring. I did the same with polarizing Sudoku with the odd even cells and people asked me why I did it and it's because with both uh, odd even where you've got the gray circles and the gray dots it will often completely obscure your highlight coloring whereas with this you can see your gray square but if I was to highlight all of those green you can still see your gray square but your highlight coloring is still incredibly clear and if I highlight those yellow which is the other color I use um, for um, sandwich then my highlight coloring is still completely visible, but I can still see the clues that have been given. Whereas if it's just gray and I tint, it ends up overriding colors and it doesn't matter what color I choose for which shading color I want to use. The clues are still 100% visible, but the, um, the coloring of um, the, the clues are still visible and your coloring is still visible. So I do this specifically to make sure that which, who, um, whoever is solving, they can use whatever co um, highlight coloring they want and it's not going to be overridden by the clue. Even if you choose to use gray on this, your clue is still visible um, and you can choose whichever color. But anyway, um, how do the rules work? So normal Sudoku rules apply. In every box, in every row, and in every column, the digits 1 to 9 must be placed without repetition. Um, the clues outside the grid are sandwich clues, which means that the number outside the grid is going to be the total of the digits that are between the 1 and the 9 in that row or column. So, for example, between wherever the 1 and the 9 are in this column, there will be digits summing to 16. In this row, between between the 1 and the 9, there will be digits summing to 5. Um, between the 1 and the 9 in this row, digits summing to 22. Um, we then have the grey cells are fortress cells, and that means that all orthogonally adjacent digits must be, um, or the fortress cell must be larger than all orthogonally adjacent digits. So this will be larger than all of those. And then there's this, which I've not seen before, all possible fortress cells are shown. That is, there is a negative constraint on fortresses, and any unshaded cell must be orthogonally adjacent to at least one larger digit. Which means that, for example, this cell here must be orthogonally adjacent to a larger digit. 
This cell must be orthogonally adjacent to a larger digit. I've not seen that before. So I think I can see something that's going to come from that. But anyway, um, that's the rules. Let's give this a shot. So let's think about that negative constraint. So these must be larger than everything next to them, and that's fine. But we've got one in each box, and that I think is a bit of a hint because all possible fortress cells are cell, fortress cells are shown. So, if every unshaded cell must be next to a larger digit, how do you put a nine into an unshaded cell? Because if I put a nine here, I've got to put something larger than nine next to it. If I put a nine here, I've got to put something larger than nine next to it, and I can't do that because there is a negative constraint on fortresses and any unshaded cell must be orthogonally adjacent to at least one larger digit. I cannot put nine next to a larger digit. So surely that means that all of those cells become the nines, which means they are immediately crusts for sandwiches. That has to be true. There is no other way of doing that. Because if, yeah, if I put nine anywhere that isn't shaded, I've got to put something larger than nine next to it. Even on a border, I've got to put something larger than nine next to it. That doesn't work. So immediately, so all of that work I did is possibly pointless, but immediately with the, the extra color, but I didn't know that. Um, all of the, those become crust. So that allows me to do some stuff immediately. I'm going to bring up my sandwich calculator. Um, 19, well, let's start here. 18 is at least three cells. Um, so those are uh, not, actually, I should have started in this column. But anyway, these are not crust. 18 can only be three or four. So the, the one can be here or here only, because if it's three, the one will be there. If it's four, the one will be there. And these are not crust. Now, 18 can be three in this direction or three in this direction. So the one has to be here or here. I don't know which. 22, well, can't do 22 in one, so it has to go down. 22 is in four or five. So the one is down here for this clue, which means this is not the one, this is the one, and that becomes crust. I don't know how easy this puzzle is. So all of these are immediately not crust. Five clue can only be done in one or two. So the one is either here or here, and these are not crust, but I was doing columns. 19, I think, is at least three. Yeah, three or four. So can't have to do use at least three. The crust is here or here, but these cannot be, because if this was the one, I would have to do 19 in one, two, three, four, five, and I can't do 19 in five. Not without using a one. 12, well, I can't do, put it there because it'd be a zero. 12 is at least two, I expect. Yeah, two or three. So the one is here or here. So both of these are not, and I can immediately put ones in there. That's just by Sudoku. So all of these go green. Now this is 16 in two or three, which I imagine, no, 16 has to be three. So this becomes the one. Okay, this is happening very, very disturbingly quickly. Um, no, nothing about this column, this column, or this column. Now, this row, 14, can be 2, 3, or 4. So it can only be 3 or 4 now. So the 1 is in one of those two. Uh, 13. Can't do 13 in 1. So, well, yeah, I got that. So this is the 1. I'm forgetting my Sudoku. Um, so 13 can't be done in a single cell, so it's, this is the one, it has to be, and these are all not, I could have done some Sudoku off this, I suppose, and now I've got the 22 is in four, I can't do nine in one, this is not the one, so this is the one here. Nine has to be at least two, but could be three. So the one is in one of those. Oh, the nine is in two because that one, meaning I can't put one there. So this is the one. Well, this is happening fast. 
these are all that one means this is the one this is not the one and I've got most of the ones pardon me so what I don't have is these but I now have a bunch of possible sandwich totals so this for example is 9 in 2 that's not going to help me 13 in 2 5 8 or 6 7 I'm looking for something more powerful. 22 in 4 means these are 13 because an entire row is going to sum to 45. Um, you take off 10. So a sandwich, um, the green cells in a sandwich row will be 45 minus 10 being the crusts. So if this is 22, this is 35 minus 22. So this will be 13. 13 in 3 yeah, don't know much about it. This is 13 in 2, however, which is again 5, 8, or 6, 7. Oh, this is a 5. So this is not 5, this is not 8, because I have to put 5 between those. Don't know anything about this column. 14 in 3, still lots of options. Now, I'm not sure where the best place to start is. Getting all the crusts really quick is good, but what do I do then? 16 in 3. Again, lots of options. I've got to do 12 without a 5. So it could be 4, 8... Or 237 or 246. Fourteen. Fourteen in three without a five. Two four eight. Or three, four, seven. There must be a four in here. Because this is two, four, eight, or three, four, seven. So it's two, four, eight, or three, four, seven. Which just means there's a six out here somewhere. One, two, three, four. But there's also a five out there somewhere. So there's five and a six out here. All these values seem very, very average. 19 in 4. Again, quite average. So these sum to 16. 16, is that right? Yeah. Which is right next to average. Okay, so there is a deep logic trick here that I don't yet grok. So is it a trick? So... I can tell what these cells sum to, maybe? That uh, can't be it, can it? Well, maybe. I mean, that's a weird trick I've never seen used before. But it could be a thing. So... The, the sum of the sandwiches in here, and I don't know where this one ends, is 19 plus 16 plus 12. Now, 19, 16, and 12 is 47. 
So I've got to make 47 in here, but this is 14. Now this cell isn't included, but I've got to make 47 in here. Now I've got, but this all sums to 45 minus nine. So this is 36. Now this is not included. So I've got 35 from this box, possibly not including that cell. <clears throat> that go anywhere? I'm, I'm used to people who set sandwich puzzles putting all the clues on one side. So all the sandwich clues go here and here. And I'm curious as to why... I, I'm assuming it's been done for just pattern rather than any particular reason. Do I... Am I looking for conflicts here? So, this is 18 and 22. 18 and 22. So, this is 22. If I put 18 in here... And I know what these sum to as well. These are going to sum to 18, 35 minus 17. So I've got 17 in here, 18 in here, and 22 in here. Can I do some weird killer math here? Like if this was a 22 cage, there was an 18 cage in here and an 18 cage in here. Could I find out these remainders? So this is 90. I can take off 10. So 80 minus 22 is 58, oh God, I'm now doing math in my head, 58, now this, uh, notes, take notes, always take notes, so I'm at 58, I'm now taking off 35 minus 18 is 17, I think, doing that in my head, 17, taking off 17, so that gets me to 41, so if I take off that, I've got to get, sorry, ah, oh, crikey, so I've removed those, and now I've taken off those, and I'm at 41. I can take off the 9, which gets me to 32, but in here I'm only putting in 17. So if this was 17... Hang on, oh, I need to do this again. I do need to do this again. So I've got 90 minus 22, which is 58. Sorry, 80 minus 22, which is 58. Take off this 17, got me to 41. Take off another 9, gets me to 32. So what I'm down to now is th these cells. Those cells are 32. Now, in here is 18. If I take 18 off 32, I'm at 14. And it's got to be 13 once I take the one off. So if the one was here, this would have to be 13. That's not going to work. This is the one. I have no idea if that's the way to prove this, but it's the way I've done it. And I've never had to use logic like that in Sandwich before, and I really like it. So that's the one, that's the one, and I now have all of the... But these two cells sum to 13, and I can't use a 9. So it's 8, 5, or 7, 6. Now this is 18 in 3... which must have a seven or a six in it. Hang on, it must have a seven or a six in it. 18 in three is three, seven, eight, four, six, eight, or five, six, seven. Um, that, uh, this, but it must, 
it must have an eight or a five in it as well. So that's not helping. So two options have sevens, two options have sixes, two options have eights. So there's something weird going on there. This is under a lot of pressure. This is under a lot of pressure, but this is 18 in three. And it's five, six, seven, or eight. So I've got a... So these... Hang on, now I've got a lot of pressure on five, sixes, and sevens. Because three, seven, eight, four, six, eight, or five, six, seven. Five, six, seven would make this eight. And these would be the same. Twelve in three, is that going to help me? I need something that's going to give me a leg up here. Two of the options have twos in them, but I can still put twos down here. Two is up here, so two is down here. Just by Sudoku. I do have to put a four in here somewhere. I don't need a four in 18 in three, but I can have one. So I'm trying to see which of these sandwich clues, these sum to 13. Is there more tricks like that I can use? Because that was very clever. I'd never seen anything like that before. Why I thought of it, I do not know. So this sums to 19, this sums to 12, and this sums to 16. If I knew what that digit was, I'm going to get rid of the green now. I don't need it. So if I knew what... So does that mean I can get the sums of those digits? I think I can, because what I've got is 19, 12, and 16. Now, those, I think, were 47, I can, and these are 35. So these have to sum to 12, I think? They have to sum to 12. So those three cells there sum to 12. The minimum I can put in here is two, which would make these 10. But I can ramp these down and ramp this up. So this could be as low as, well, there has to be a four in here. Okay, so I'd actually spent a whole heap of time trying to solve this and getting absolutely nowhere, and I stopped the video thinking, I cannot do this, and then I walked away, and I was doing some other stuff, and I was actually in a completely other room doing something else when I went, oh my god, that puzzle had a negative constraint. So I've come back, and I've rewound to the point, um, uh, a point where... I actually probably didn't need to find this 12 logic, but I thought it was really, really cool the way that this existed in the puzzle, and I'd never seen anything like it in a sandwich puzzle before. So I've actually not rolled back further, which I could have done. And I wanted to really, really showcase this because I thought this was really cool. And I actually am thinking of using this in a sandwich puzzle um, because I really love this logic. I've, I, I've never seen it before. So I wanted to keep this in because even though it's probably not needed, I wanted to keep it in. And now I'm going to have a look at this puzzle again, remembering there is a negative constraint on the fortress cells. I'm sure many of you were going, but you can place digits because I haven't looked at the negative constraint yet. I'm about to do that now. So 
I know I just found that these could sum to 12. Maybe that'll be useful. As, useful. These sum to 13. Maybe that'll be useful because every single unshaded cell has to be taught next to a larger digit, which means if I was to put an eight here, everything would blow up. So eights must go next to nines. So where can eights go in boxes? Well, I can't put an eight there. That just can't happen. Um, I can't put an eight here. So if I can't put an eight here, these sum to 13. So this can't be a five. Um, if this was... A, now, I can't put an eight here. It's not next to nine. So this can't be a five. But where can eight go in this box? It can go here or here only, I think. So eight is in one of those two cells. Because I Oh, no, it could also be down here. So that is not true. So... Eight in this box, however, can only go in one of those two cells. Now, can I put eight into... I've got to bring up my calculator again. I had shut it all down. I can't put eight into a three cell 12 clue. So eight is in one of those three cells in this box, which means in this box, eight has to go in one of those two cells, but I can't put it there. That is an eight because it has to go next to a nine this is going to be huge. It has to go next to a nine. Um, and yeah, that cell is not next to a nine. Th this is just, oh man, I'm so sorry, everyone. Now in this box, eight can't go in any of those cells. So eight is in one of those two. In this box, well, that can't be an eight. I don't need to have an eight in here, but in this box, eight can't go in any of those. So eight is in one of those two, which means that's not an eight. In this box, eight is in one of those three. I think. But in this box, eight is in one of those two. No, one of those three. Hmm, this has actually run out more than I thought. But I now have an eight in this 22. So it's 22 in four with an eight in it. So there's no longer a four in here. I can't put a four in here because it is... Oh, no, I can. It is two, five, seven, eight, or three, four, seven, eight, or three, five, six, eight. So, yeah, well, the way to look at that is these now sum to 14. Oh, can I get further with eights? So where can eights go? What color will I use for eights? Eights can go, eights must go next to nines. So let's highlight cells next to nines. I've already got that eight. So let's use orange. Uh, that could be an eight wasn't for that cell, things would be very, very... So is there an elimination here I can do? Like if this is 8, this is 8, this is 8, this is 8, this is 8. Well, these aren't 8 because of that 8. There's no 8 in either of those. So this is not 8. This is 8 because that is not 8. And these had to sum to 12. Well, these sum to 14, but these sum to 12 by that weird logic. So these now have to sum to 4. So that's not 4 or 7. So this is either a 2 or a 1, and it can't be a 1. That's a 2, and that's a 2. These sum to 14, so that's a 4. That is... That's using that really cool trick that I found. But I can now get rid of the green. That's not a two anymore. That's a two. This is not an eight. This is an eight. So that is not orange. This is not orange. Orange is now pointing down here. So this is the eight, which means this is the eight which means there's no eight in 
those. This is the only... Oh, I forgot to mark that. Oh, crikey. Did that do anything? No, because this eight knocked the eight out of there and that caused this chain. This did not do anything there, I'm sure. Actually, I'm just going to quickly roll that back and confirm. Yes, actually that... Yeah, that did not do anything, but what I do need to do is pay attention to eight is in one of those two. Which means that's not the eight and that's the eight. Okay, that I can live with. Because I can't put eight over here. This is the eight. So this is not eight. Eight is one of those two, one of those two, and one of those two. Okay, so orange goes away. Can I do any better with that? Now, six, this 8 must have 16 in it, so this is a 6-8 pair. Now, 7, oh, 7 is wide open. It has to go in next to an 8 or a 9. But this is an 18, so this is a 10 clue. Huh. This is 22, so these have to sum to 12. I can't use 9, 4, I can't use 8, 5. Sorry, I can't, I can't use 9, 3, I can't use 8, 4. This has to be 7, 5 but the seven could go anywhere because it could be next to a nine or an eight. So that's fine. But these are now one, two, three, four, six. And these are two, five, and seven. And the seven is good anywhere. That's not the two. So the two is in here, which puts the two in one of those two. Now this is three, four, six, and this is an 18 clue. So this is four, six, or seven. Now, if this is the seven, that's the eight. So if this is three, seven, that becomes eight. And if this is seven, eight. If the, wow, if this is three, this is seven. This would have to be an eight. So the seven is next to something taller because I can't put an eight or a nine here and these wouldn't be. This would have to be the eight. So three, seven, eight. And then this 13 would have no fill because I couldn't use six, seven or eight, five. So this is, not the th this is not the three. This is not the seven. This is a four, six pair. There's no six there. These sum to 13. No six there means there's no seven there. Wow. Hang on. I just removed something wrong from up here. There's no six there, so there's no seven there. That's bonkers. Three, four, six. Oh, I wish I could narrow these down. This is a quad. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Seven needs to go next to eight or nine. So if I put a seven there, that wouldn't work. This could be a seven if that's an eight. These would both be okay. This can't be a seven though. But this is a 19 clue. These have to sum to nine. These have to sum to nine. I can't use three, six, and I can't use seven, two. This is a four, five clue. There's no three, seven there. This is four, five. There's no four, five there. This is three, seven. If this is the seven, this is the eight. But this is four, five. If this is three, this is, and this is 12, which is working. Hang on, I now know what this is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is six. These are one, two, three, and seven. If this was seven, this would have to be higher than it, and it can't be eight or nine. So that's the three, and that's the seven. That's seven, well, I know what these are now. 
One, two, three, and six. So these are one, two, three, four, five, and seven. This is so strange. So these are nine. So this is either two, four, or five. Two, four, five, seven, quadruple. This is a three or a six. This is very strange. But I'm making progress now because of the negative constraint. I have to remember the sandwich clues, though. Oh, actually, I know this is a 22 clue, so these sum to 13. So this is 8 and 5. So this is a 7. There's no 7 here. There's no 7 here, so there's no... No, there's no 2 here. This is a 4-5 pair. This is the 2. There's no 2 here. This is actually a 5. There's no 5 here. Four, five, seven. Now, if this is a five, uh, it would be next to something. This is a five, this would be a seven, this would be a four, and that would all work. If this is a four, this is a seven, this is a five, that would be a seven, and it would all work. Now, if this is a four, five, seven, five, yeah, that would work. This negative constraint is causing me stress, <laughs> like actual stress. Um, these are a pair. Two, four. And this can't be a four because of the four, six pair. That's the two. That's the four. This is not the two. And I know what these are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three, five, and seven. Well, there's no five in there. This is the five. This is a three, seven pair. That five makes this four and this five. These are one, two, three, four, six. And I know the order. This is the six. This is the four. The whole negative constraint. I, I spent like half an hour staring at this puzzle going, how is this solvable? Negative constraints are important, people. All people, including me. This is now an 8, because this sum to 13. I had that ages ago. So that 8 makes this 6 and this 8. This is a beautiful puzzle, if you remember how what you're supposed to do. Uh, this is now a 3, so this is not a 3. So this is now a known digit. It's not an 8. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a seven, which makes this three and this seven. This is a triple. One, two, three, four, and six. Well, there's no three there, so this is the three. Ooh. <laughs> hmm. That's going to be triggered by the negative constraint somehow. Such as, if this is a 6, both of these are 4. If this is a 6, both of those are 4, and it's not next to a higher digit. That has to be the 4. These are the 6s. That is the 4. Negative constraints are important. These are not 6s, but they have to sum to 13. So they're also not 7, and this becomes 8 and 5. This is not the 8. This is so beautifully done. So beautifully done. Um, now, this is a pair. Let's look at the pair. Two and seven, which is not resolved, but let's look at the triple. It's probably going to be this can't be a seven, because if this was a seven, I would need to put an eight, nine in one of those spots, and I can't do it. This has to be the two. This has to be the seven. See, it's already free, because I couldn't put eight or nine in either of those cells. Really, really nice. Three, four, six. That's not four. Now, this can't be a six, because if this was a six, this would be three and four, and all cells would be lower than it. So it can't be a six. If this was a four, this could be the six. 
So that's okay. But six is in one of those two. Hang on, this four is looking down, making this five. So this becomes seven. This five makes this four, which makes this seven, which makes this five. This is a triple. One, two, three, six. I'm always confirming because I've made mistakes like this in the past. So if this was six, oh, sandwich clues. This is sandwiches I can use. I've done this one. 13 is done. 22 is done. 9 is done. 14 is done. 18 is done. 18 is done. 22 is done. 19 is done. 12 is done. 16 is done. So I've done all the sandwich clues. It is literally down to negative constraint now. Either way these go, they are next to higher digits. Either way these go, they're next to higher digits. If this is a 6, this would have to be a 7, an 8, or a 9, and it can't be. This can't be a 6, because I cannot put a 7, 8, or... These are already lower, th uh, lower than it, and I cannot put a 7, 8, or 9 in that cell. So this is a 2 or a 3. So these are 2, 3, 6, and 7. I can't put 7 there. I can't put 2 there. I've got to put, a f what are these? One, two, three, five, seven. I can't put seven there. Ooh, this is getting messy. This is now done. Like it's next to something higher. This is 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 not, and it can't be a seven. Because if, this, right, if this was a seven, these would both be all be lower than it. So this is not the seven. This is the three, five pair. I can take the three out of there. This becomes two, six, and seven. Right, very cool. These are now resolved, however. But that six takes six out of there. This is a three, four pair. This becomes the six. This is not two or six. This is the three. This is the six. The three makes this six and this three. This is now one, two, three, four. This two makes this four and two. The four makes this three and four. The three makes this five and three. And the three makes this seven and three. And that is the puzzle. T with the queen by full deck and missing a few cards. So much better if you remember the negative constraint. And as I said, I probably could have rolled back further than where I cut in, which I think was like 25 minutes into the solve and um, actually um, use the negative constraint a lot earlier. Except I really thought this trick with the hidden 12 total was beautiful. I've done quite a lot of sandwich Sudoku and I do not remember ever doing anything like that before. And whether it was intentional or not, or whether I just found that by pure desperation, it is really, really nice. And I wanted to highlight that that is very cool sandwich logic. And I want to see that used again. Um, very, very nice puzzle. That was absolutely gorgeous, even if I forgot the negative constraint originally. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, hopefully you really like that logic as much as I did, even if it was completely serendipitous. Thank you, everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I ended up doing. I have to admit, for a while there that you will never see, I was very unhappy. Um, yeah. Thanks very much. And I, yeah, having a good time with everything that we're trying to bring you. The puzzle community is so cool right now. Thank you, everyone. And as always, good luck with your solving.